Well, I got the dip cover off, I meant on, and uh, got gear oil in it, you know, with the pump. Uh, before I put the drum brakes on, or like pretty much after, uh, I wanted to show you like this neat little tool here for adjusting these brakes. So here at the bottom, you have a, a slack adjuster here. So as the brake pads start uh, moving more than normal, the way it pulls this uh, cable, pulls up on this little finger here, to uh, tighten, uh, to expand this adjuster, and that adjusts your brake pads. So the factory OEM ones were good, but sometimes these Chinese uh, ends are not correct. So you can see how this is not like centered. It's like the eyelet is too big for this. So it doesn't quite adjust properly. But using this tool here, you go in this little slot right here, and you can adjust the, the tension on it. So on the passenger side, you go up with it to loosen it so you can take the drum off if it was too tight or there's a lip on the inside of the drum or you go down with it to tighten it up. And as you can tighten it, you can hear the, the clicks as you're uh, tightening it up. So make sure you put a lot of like never seize on these threads and stuff so it doesn't get rusted up and stuck. But pretty simple system, brake pressure goes in the master cylinder and spreads out the two pins, which spreads out the brake pads. Or when you pull the emergency brake, this cable here gets pulled in, which pulls on this like arm that uh, pushes against this brake pad and this metal rod that connects to this side to spread the tops apart that way. So I still got decent brake pad material on there, uh, so I'm going to put this all back together. I'll run these for at least another year before I change these rear brake pads. Got that side back together, got the drum on this. Also, once you get these on, what you do is you spin it by hand and you slowly tighten that adjuster till they start to drag. So you do this one until you hear it start to drag on the brake pad to the drum. Then you do the other side and then you know your uh, brakes are adjusted good. If you have them too tight where you can't even spin the tire by hand, then you got to back off on them. But with that locker, I should be able to get more than a year out of a set of tires. And eventually I need a new set of rims because I already know three out of these four rims are bent. Two of them are bent pretty bad. So like you can kind of see like the wheel weights on there and stuff. But like if you put on the balancer, you can see how bad it's bent, you know. It was bent before I got the truck, you know, somebody was probably towing something heavy and hit a really bad pothole or something like that. They had a gooseneck and fifth wheel in this truck, so they probably were pulling like a one, t like a big, like 30 foot pull behind camper or something behind this half ton, you know, and uh, probably uh, went over some kind of bump or something like that and bent the rims, so but I'm having a hard time finding factory original steel wheels. You know, I gotta go to the junkyard, keep trying until I find a set that are not bent. Well, I don't really wanna get like aftermarket rims because that kind of ruins the look of Stinky Pete, you know? I've had a company offer me a brand new set of like aftermarket rims and tires, you know, which was like uh, almost $2,000 worth of rims and tires, but those are like uh, 18 inch rims uh with tires i would have had to use spacers on these or adapters and things like that and i just did not really want to go that crazy i didn't want the wheels sticking out uh past the fenders you know so it's not throwing mud and crap up on the truck you know and i'm not a fan of uh low profile tires like that because the rims bend easier you know I, this is still an everyday driver it's not a full-on like polished turd show truck type thing but I am noticing a lot more of these shows I go to, I'm getting a lot more like offers like for like free tickets and free uh, shirts and products and things like that. Uh, basically one or two like sponsorship type things. But again, I'm not, I just never really got into sponsorships or anything, you know, but uh, I might have to do that just to pay for all these parts on Sneaky Peep. You know, like, I, don't, I would not need all these parts if I did it like an everyday driver. But going to these shows, doing burnouts and stuff like that, it's really rough on the truck. So uh, now the differential's done. Uh, now I can finish putting this all back together. I got the brand new injector uh, 
I think these are called connector tubes that that company forgot. So like they say, you can't reuse these. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you can. Literally, if you ta uh, take this, put it in a, uh, a lathe, um, you can machine just a few thousands of an inch off these and reuse them. But I got a brand new set, so I'm gonna put those in. And then I can get the, the injector lines in, intake, get all the electrical back ran and everything. Well, so far I got the injector lines in, I got the intake on, uh, the throttle linkage and the transmission downshift cable. Uh, I just got the electrical to do, uh, fuel line to hook up. Uh, I also got to put in a T in the fuel line for the pressure sensor, uh, hook that up and run the wires at least uh, in through the firewall into the dash to do that later. And once the electrical's in, then I can put the air intake piece on because it's a pain to get to the wire hookups on the back of the alternator if the air intake is on here. And of course I gotta prime it with fuel. I already primed the pump up with some uh, motor oil with a syringe and it should be ready to fire up and uh, start doing some tests. Oh yeah, I still got like these uh, injector lines cracked open because I gotta bleed the air out of the lines and a little odds and ends, but I should have this done by uh, like tomorrow or, or like before the end of this, Memorial weekend and then I gotta get it running get the idle speed set uh, do a little tuning on it and then I gotta drive it check to make sure the differential is not leaking anywhere uh, check to make sure that the original temperature sensor is not working if not I gotta wire in the backup right there and uh, just make sure everything is good to go but we are getting to the final stretch right now once Sticky Pete is out of the shop, then I gotta pull in the other Chevy to fix a uh, oil pressure problem. I got someone coming next weekend to look at uh, my uh, 2008 Chevy that's for sale. So I gotta pull the water pump off, change the camshaft positioning sensor piece that's on the timing cover. I'll also pull the timing cover off. I'm going to put a uh, racing oil pump on it and also change from underneath uh, an oil pan. The, the spring pressure switch thing, you know, bypass that completely. When it's cold, it has perfect oil pressure. But when it gets up to normal operating temperature, it gets down kind of low. It gets down to 10 PSI, and I'm not really a fan of that. So I'm going to do a few things to the oil system to get that oil pressure up like where it's supposed to be. After that, I might uh, pull the bed off the, the, the uh, old Chevy. Uh, maybe pull the motor trans out of it and get that out and stuff for another project. Uh, I've been helping my one friend with his truck, just letting him use my shop and stuff. So uh, he's uh, been sanding down the frame and painting it, fix the rear main oil seal that was leaking and put the transmission back on. He still has a lot of rust to fix on it, especially this uh, cab corner and everything. It's just coming off. So I should say cab mount, you know. Same thing on the other side. But the projects never end. That's just mechanical projects, you know? Just like uh, these packing kits need to be uh, done right away because they are leaking so bad. Same thing on the end of those cylinders. And then I got the crack boom I need to fix. Hydraulic hoses and stuff to fix on that. Work to pull, uh, do on my bulldozer and then I still got tons of work to do on the property. But I'll keep you updated as things go along.